Hello everyone. Uh, the present topic is investigation of the self-similarity of the solar photosphere by means of the equations of radiation hydrodynamics. Uh, myself, Dr. Koshi Ghosh from University Institute of Technology, the University of Badwan, India, and uh, my collaborators are Purbasha Haldar and Dr. Prabir Bharami. Purbasha is actually doing a PhD under me and Dr. Gharami. So I begin with, uh, first of all, I would say something about the objectives of the present work. As you can see here, the progression and behavior of the solar photosphere are basically dictated by the movement of mass and energy across the solar surface. Though the solar photosphere and the thin upper convective zone layer that surrounds it cover only a small fraction of the solar radius. Uh, the investigation of the dynamics in this region remains highly important. Why? Because it displays complex dynamic phenomena driven by variations in temperature, pressure, and density along the vertical axis. Using the available data, some data still available, uh, some simulation studies have already been conducted on the turbulence and self-repeating patterns of the solar granulation. And uh, we have seen in the previous communications uh, representing the notable visual manifestation of the uh, convective zonal, some kind of uh, self-similarity about the sol uh, solar photosphere. So some evidence were already there, which is actually observational one, but uh, we have to nurture the theoretical studies also. So the present objective is, will be uh, this particular work will be focusing on that particular aspect. And that is the main point. The current research is focused on theoretically examining the solar uh, photosphere by means of the self-similarity or the fractal characteristics using the equations of radiation hydrodynamics, namely the continuity equation, Euler's equation of momentum balance, and energy balance equation, which illustrate the behaviors of the various layers on the solar surface. Let me say something about the self-similarity and the fractal nature. The very word fractality came from the Latin word fractus, which means broken. A set is called a fractal if it displays self-similarity. Would you mean by that? It can be split into parts and each part is approximately a reduced copy of the whole. So mathematically to say we have this repetitions from the very macro phase to the micro phases and in this microphases, we can see the repetition of the pattern and the particular characteristics. Ideally, infinitely range fractality indicates a pattern which is continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere, which is very ideal, of course. In practical cases, if we see something very near about that one, we allow to say that, yes, that's showing some kind of self-similarity or fractal nature in those cases. An excellent introduction into the field of fractals were given by Mandelbrot. The book was published in the year 1982. Uh, what is about the self similar solutions uh, for some nonlinear evolution equations? Because we will be attacking the problem from the particular perspective. If self similarity is observed in any phenomena, we can have some advantage of prediction because that's very important. Prediction, you know, that from the very available data, what we learn. Let me apply this in the future perspectives and try to find out whether the observation, what we expect in the future, that is giving the similar measurement from the current uh, corrections or particular simulations what we have done from the available data. So that is the explanation. And if there is some sense similarity, we can take the small sample of the data, identify the results, collect the patterns, and then we can expect that, that the same form of patterns or this particular characters can be again observed in the future days. The usual approach involves assuming a particular form of the solution and introducing a change of variables that simplifies the governing equations. Self-similar solutions provide a scale invariant solution system. Our self-similarity allows the reduction of a system which considers both space and time independently where a single independent coordinate of space is a combination of both rescale space coordinate and time. So let us start with the present topic, uh, solar granulation in photosphere. What is the physics here? 
The solar granulation is the visible manifestation of convective overshooting motions in the solar photosphere. I will show the figure. Studies of the fractal dimension of solar granulation were made for the first time by Rudier and Muller in the year 1986. And there are certain observational evidence of cell similarity as I have already mentioned. It has been noted a very prominent kind of scale invariant nature in the solar photosphere from the data as well as from the image. So let us see what is the image actually. This is one image available here. Uh, this is one segmentation of this uh, particular uh, solar granulation figure. You can see here that if you just take a small, very, very tiny portion of this microscopic vision, you will see the patterns or the particular characteristics what physically and statistically uh, being prevailed in that particular portion that is showing some kind of very similarity or very repetitive nature with the entire macrophase also. So there can be some form of such similarity and we are trying to investigate how theoretically we can have these particular explanation. So let's see the working theory. As we know that uh, these uh, dynamics of solar photosphere basically being described by the equations of the radiation hydrodynamics and these radiation hydrodynamics equations are namely the continuity equation as you can see here in number one Euler's equation of momentum balance this is the number two equation and the energy balance this is the third equation these are the basic equations i'm not going to depict or read these things these are very common and we have used this particular equations trying to analyze these equations visually try to identify if there exists some kind of cell similar solutions for it. If we can understand for each of the cases we can have the cell similar solution, we can expect that entirely the cell similar solution can be also understood for the proper physical phenomena of the solar stratosphere. So we are trying to investigate in that way. So what is our proposed model? Let us begin with the first equation and we propose here the rho function the u vector in this manner as given here we consider rho as a function of you know the uh, x y z these are the coordinates from the space and t as a time and also we take the i j k coordinates of the u vector as u1 u2 u3 respectively all are supposed to be the functions of x y z and time t so in this form we will be having if you just put this particular expressions of these u as well as rho what we have taken in the first equation we will be having this number two but the next part is that let us assume at the very beginning that there is some form of cell similarity in the expressions of these rho u1 u2 and u3 and accordingly we put this particular expressions in this form and you can see that rho is taken as some t to the power alpha in some r one particular uh, function we have introduced of the different coordinate systems xi1, xi2, xi3. These are being mapped from xyz, projected from xyz coordinate to the xi1, xi2, xi3 coordinates. Similarly, this u1 is taken t to the power beta into v1, u2 is taken t to the power gamma into v2, u3 is taken t to the power delta into v3, and these xi1, xi2, xi3, these are taken as some t to the power eta1 into x. So this is the connection between the x and the xi1 Similarly, xi2 is t to the power eta2 into y and xi3 is t to the power gamma3 into z. Accordingly, if we consider all these things here in the main equation, you can see part by part for different slices, we have considered these expressions. And if we just uh, go through the simulation very patiently, we will find out or observe that the result is coming somehow like this. So these are the expression what we can have from these particular substitution from the very first equation. Now the point is, uh, if we believe that this equation is true in all such cases uniformly, what we expect, that we expect at the very beginning this expression 9a should be true, this expression, as well as this 9b, because we believe that this particular solution is accepted every time, at every space, every space point. So accordingly, we will have this form of solution. This implies somehow Rv1 should be exclusively a function of Xi2 and Xi3. These Rv2 should be exclusively a function of Xi1 and Xi3. And so as Rv3 is a function exclusively of Xi1 and Xi2. And if we believe that these are true, we can take one particular form of solution. I am not claiming, we are not claiming that this solution is a unique result or representation from the entire 
uh, philosophy what we have in the present context but this is one of the possible solutions and if we just concentrate on this particular type of solutions this is going to be valid because if i suppose r as some c uh, xi1 to the power p xi2 to the power q and xi3 to the power r and similarly for v1 v2 v3 these expressions are being taken you can easily identify if you take the multiplication between r and v1 the xi1 expression is actually nullified similarly if you take r v2 expression you will find that xi2 is not there and r v3 expression you can find out that it is only taking xi1 and xi2 no xi3 should be uh, present in this particular case it would be i think uh, xi1 uh, is a particular mistake here i'm sorry for this one anyway so we will have finally these expression to be true so one restriction or condition is coming out from the prevailing uh, results that alpha plus uh, this p eta 1 xi 1 plus q eta 2 xi 2 plus r eta 3 xi 3 should be zero with these parameter values. And uh, of course, these are some real values. And uh, if we have this particular condition to be true, we are also making this particular result that this row is coming out to be this expression, u1 is coming out to be this expression, u2 is this, and u3 is this one. So we can expect as a whole, as this particular combinations are coming out, we can expect that the equation of continuity is excluding some form of self-similarity. Of course, the condition is there, but with the help of this condition, we are getting this self-similarity present in the present context. And we can have the other equations from the second equation, we will put in the same manner this is the p expression we put here as t to the power psi 1 into some pi of the xi 1 xi 2 xi 3 coordinate system f vector is taken to be t to the power psi 2 of capital f vector of the xi 1 xi 2 xi 3 and we follow the substitution once again and we can see that this kind of expression is coming out here in this case and of course uh, what happens that you have to consider these result to be true universally every, every, everywhere so what happens that if that is to be true everywhere, we are getting certain conditions. As we can see that these alpha plus beta minus one should be equal to this alpha plus two beta plus eta one, etc. These all the things should be very similar and they are same to each other. And accordingly, we are getting, if you just try to solve these out, we will find out that psi one is coming out to be alpha, psi two is alpha minus one. This beta, gamma, delta, they are equal to each other and they are coming to be zero. And eta 1, eta 2, eta 3, all of them are equal and coming to be in particular minus 1. So what happens? We can have finally this alpha is equal to p plus q plus r. So this is one condition we are actually here uh, getting for the present case. This is the restriction we should say that self-similarity is there, of course. But with the presence of this particular um, condition, what we have in the present context. So conclusion. We have considered the equation of continuity, the momentum equation and the energy balance equation governing the dynamics of solar photosphere. And we have started with the assumption of having self-similar solution. Finally, we validate our answer with certain conditions coming in the final cases. So we believe that yes, there might be some form of self-similarity in the present context, but with certain restrictions. So it means that temporary cases might be there some special cases might be there that means not it is expected that everywhere at every time we should have the self-similarity but at certain point of time and certain point of the space we can expect this self-similarity wherever these particular conditions are being satisfied with the present parameters so finally we can conclude that as a whole it indicates a possible fractal nature or the self-similar nature of the dynamics of solar photosphere with certain situations or particular restrictions. So let me finally see uh, or just uh, go through the references in the present work what we have actually used. Some additional references. So finally, thank you very much for your kind uh, cooperation. Thank you.